Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. This is Chris Cottrell with part four of my presentation on the formation of Carolina Bays. Um, I've really been working hard to keep these videos under 10 minutes, so if you haven't seen the first three parts yet, please go back and check those out first. Uh, it shouldn't take too long to get caught up, and the information there will help you understand this part. So uh, with that said, let's go and get started. Um, so far, we've been discussing how the Carolina Bays have been formed, but equally as important, or maybe even more so, is when they were formed. Uh, if we look at these two time scales, here's us right here. Uh, this is the the, the uh, Holocene Epoch, and way back here is like another one you may have heard of, like Jurassic, uh, the Jurassic time period. Uh, that's like 200 million years. Uh, but the point that we have to look at is that these time scales change in, in a lot of these uh, diagrams. So pay very special attention to that. Um, you know, this chart here shows 800,000 years of temperature data, uh, and that's just from here to here on this chart. And then really this whole stretch of this chart is just a small blip of you know, on the bottom chart. So just make sure that you're very careful with uh, with looking at times. And we'll talk about these time, these these temperature scales adjusting here in a few minutes. Um, now, one thing that everyone can agree on at this point uh, about this event, uh, you know, the Saginaw Bay impact that we talked about, uh, is that it took place during the Pleistocene epoch. And, you know, that's great. You know, that's before the Holocene. Uh, and that gives us about a 2.6 million year window to look at. <laughs> that's a lot of time. Uh, but actually, most would agree that this event must have taken place during the later portion of the Pleistocene, you know, which kind of narrows things down to, you know, a more manageable 800,000 years. Um, but we'll, we'll take a look at, at that again here in a few minutes. But um, on this image, we're talking about this area right here, kind of like right below that border between the Pleistocene and the Holocene, um, or it'll be right around here on this chart. And it's really the rise of the big, the big mammals. Um, so as we discussed in part one, you know, the current scientific accept, scientifically accepted theory for the formation of Carolina Bays has been wind and water erosion uh, over a long period of time. You know, we're talking hundreds of thousands of years. Um, now, ignoring what we've already discussed in parts one, two, and three um, on how this is a flawed theory, um, this gradualistic idea is mainly based on a series of dating methods uh, for the bays themselves, like radiocarbon dating, optically stimulated luminescence dating, which is really um, is dating the light exposure on, on rocks and minerals, um, and then even the dating of pollen grain layers uh, from within the bays. Now, these dating methods by themselves are very accurate, so I'm not arguing the validity of the data that was collected. What I am arguing is the pretense that these bays were formed by gradual and uniform processes. Now, most of these dating methods require the use of organic materials, such as pollen grains, you know, collected from core samples. However, once you accept the fact that these bays were formed by colossal ice chunks uh, and debris, you know, that slammed into liquefied earth after a comet fragment impacted the Laurentide ice sheet, um, you know, all of that data becomes invalid. You know, remember that th this entire area would have been reshaped in a matter of moments, including the soil itself. Um, you can see in these diagrams here, you know, we got the angle of impact, the amount of soil displaced. You know, we have raised and overlap uh, overlapping rims. Everything would have been mixed up, you know. Um, An Antonio Zamora, uh, who I mentioned last video, he's even conducted experiments that show how an ice impact uh, into unconsolidated soil would eventually resettle the serb soil into new layers within the base. Uh, and you can see that here with the red sprinkling that was a sublayer and how it resettles underneath as, as you know, in just a few moments. Okay, so if we can all agree that this event was a result of a major Ice Age impact event uh, in the area that we now call the Saginaw Bay and not gradual wind and water erosion over a really long period of time, then we can move on. Uh, and one alternative hypothesis that has caught my attention was proposed by Michael Davies, who I spoke of earlier, uh, and his CentOS independent research team. Um, they have suggested that the impact event must have occurred around 786,000 years ago. And the main reasoning behind this uh, hypothesis is the 70 years of dating research that we talked about uh, just a few moments ago. And another geologic mystery, the, uh, Astro uh, the AA tektites uh, in the Strome field. Um, these tektites, uh, well, first of all, a tektite, by the way, uh, these form after an impact with enough force that throws molten rock from the surface into space where they quickly solidify and then fall back to Earth. Now, these AA tektites have been uh, dated to an event that occurred around 786,000 years ago, but like the Carolina Bays, the impact site was never found uh, or proven. And uh, Michael has determined that the, uh, you know, the likelihood of two separate Pleistocene events of this magnitude is unlikely, and the two events must be the result of the same thing, the same event. Now, 
while uh, Michael Davies is, uh, you know, very sure of himself and quite persuasive, you know, I do have to disagree. Uh, you know, sorry, da sorry, Michael, uh, nothing personal here. But uh, for starters, you know, 786,000 years ago is a really long time. Uh, you know, these Carolina Bays uh, are way too perfectly shaped and well-defined to have survived seven or eight entire ice age cycles. Uh, we can see them here. You know, every time that this line bottoms out, you know, there's a mile or two of ice on top of Canada. So, you know, you, I can't even imagine how many hurricanes and floods and things like that that would have occurred over that amount of time. Um, my guess is that most of the wearing away of the bays uh, was pro is probably due to our own agricultural methods over the past 300 years or so here in North America. Uh, and in fact, you know, these two photos down here, these are archaeological dig sites uh, very close to the Savannah River in, in, in uh, South Carolina. And, you know, you can see here, these guys are digging four feet underground at a Clovis culture site that dates back to 13,000 years. So one of two things have happened here. One, the area was in use during the time of the Carolina Bay Formation. Or two, there should be at least three or four feet of soil accumulated on top of the entire area, including Car the Carolina Bays. And we just don't see that. Uh, and, you know, if you look at this, this is 10 or 12 feet underground here. Uh, and these guys are digging at a pre-Clovis site that dates back to 50,000 years. You know, that alone should have rewritten our own human history. Uh, but even at 50,000 years, that's not even close to 786,000 years. So I, I just don't see it there. Uh, speaking of ice ages, uh, it's widely accepted that the Great Lakes were formed at the end of our last ice age. Uh, and uh, so either the Saginaw Bay was formed over 700,000 years before the Great Lakes and then worked over by multiple ice ages, or they were formed at roughly the same time, which makes more sense to me. Uh, and then finally, the AA Tektite Strome Field uh, is found way over here in Australia and Indonesia on the other side of the world from the Saginaw Bay impact. impact. And while I'm not saying that the, it's impossible for ejected material to be thrown uh, to the other side of the globe, I just don't think it's, it's likely in this case. And I have a feeling that the impact site for that will probably be found around Australia or Antarctica. Um, so with all that said, you know, the most plausible time frame for an impact event that, that uh, you know, eventually created the Carolina Bays has to be around 12,800 years ago. And that's right at the end of the last ice age. And this isn't just my opinion. There is a amount of evidence that is piled up over, uh, you know, to support this idea. Um, I'm just going to take a minute to introduce them here. But the plan is to extend this presentation into a few more parts to, to you know, talk about them in detail because it's just kind of the only way to do that. Um, the first line of evidence uh, is the length of time of history known as the Younger Dryas. Um, you know, as we were coming out of the Ice Age, ice age something slammed into the earth, uh, or something happened anyways, uh, that caused us to go back into an Ice Age for another thousand years. And then ironically, when we came out of that a thousand years later, we all of a sudden discovered agriculture. But it's more likely we, you know, we were rediscovering it after a near extinction event. And speaking of an extinction event, you know, I'm going to talk about the megafaunal extinction event. Um, this refers to animals, specifically mammals, that are over 100 pounds, uh, and that again, that does include us. Uh, and you know, we shared this. Uh, we shared this with you know mammoths and mastodons and saber-toothed cats, and and you know, the list goes on and on. About 75% of you know megafauna went extinct about around 12,800 years ago. Um, the discovery of black matte layer, you know, with with micro diamonds and platinum, you know, that's super important. We've got the Comet Research Group that just came out with uh, with their burn papers that talks about global fires uh, 12,800 years ago. You know, and then finally, I want to wrap up my overall presentation with the evidence of mega floods uh, that were created as a result of the impact event. You know, not just the initial impact, you know, on the ice sheet, um, but also the secondary melting uh, of all this ice and slush that got slung, slung out that created the Carolina Bays. You know, all that water had to go somewhere and the evidence is still here waiting for us to rediscover it. Um, so with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. And as always, if you have any questions or just want to leave a comment or a line uh, of encouragement to keep this thing going, um, I'd love to hear it. We're connecting the dots and we'll see you next time.